a new Raspberry Pi, a new drone from DJI, and 8K 60 frames per second video on a new standard. That's what I like. Hello again guys, happy March 3rd, Thursday, whatever day this is. Thank you for coming back to this lovely little thing that I like to do on my own channel. Let's talk about some stuff that happened this week. As I mentioned in the intro, DJI is rolling out a new drone, the Phantom 4. This one comes with built-in obstacle avoidance. It has a couple of front-facing cameras you're not gonna use for recording video, it's just used for obstacle avoidance, as well as a couple of front-facing sensors that help detect distance between it. I've seen those kind of sensors in things before, like the Mbot that I made a video about a while back had an obstacle avoidance type sensor in it. it can detect things from 2 to 49 feet away. The other cool things about it, they added in a speed mode so that it can go up to 45 miles per hour, has a 28 minute long battery. The previous ones were like 21 to 25 minutes long. The standard model was 25 minutes. Before that, it was like 13 minutes for the Phantom 2 and Phantom 1, so it's getting better every time. Now, the sort of downside to this, it does come in at $13.99, and I really don't think they've changed the camera. If they have, they haven't changed it all that much, at least not the sensor. I remember seeing something about, instead of having the one arm that reaches around from the side and kind of holds it in place, it now holds it from two sides. I'm not sure how that's going to affect it, but the video quality may not be that much better. So if you're not planning to use this for sport flying, this might actually be the perfect time to pick up the original Phantom 3 4K, or the Phantom 3 Professional, because those price cuts that have been happening over the last few months. $13.99, there's only gonna be one model of it available to keep things nice and simple. I'm still a big fan of the Phantom 3 series. Moving right along though, again, as I mentioned in the intro, Raspberry Pi Model 3 is now available. Coming in at 35 bucks, the same as they all have been. I think, I cannot honestly remember if the Phantom 1 was 35 or 25. I seem to remember it was 25. Anyway, our Pi 3 is $35, and they say that it is approximately 10 times faster than the original Raspberry Pi. Now that ranges between two and like 20 times faster, depending on what benchmark you're using and what thing you're testing. For single core benchmarking, it's approximately two times the speed. For other things, I think they said neon video decoding. I'm not familiar with that, but they said that could be up to 20 times faster. Additionally, it does come with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1, so that's at least one less wire that you have to have connected to your Raspberry Pi. I'm still sort of on the fence as to whether or not to pick one up. I did just get the Kickstarter for the Pine A64, waiting on that to ship out. It hasn't shown up yet, obviously, but this looks like a really interesting product. Amazon unveiled a couple of new items in their Alexa Echo series. The Echo Dot and the Echo Tap, or just the Amazon Tap, I think. The Echo Dot is basically the Amazon Echo, but much, much, much shorter, with a 35 millimeter stereo plug. So it can function as a speaker on its own, but it's a little teeny thing, so it's not gonna be filling your room up with sound. So you could put it on your nightstand and just interact with it that way. But if you wanted to, you can actually put 35 millimeter out to your stereo system. So you could say, play stuff from Amazon Music on a giant stereo system. Not sure how many speakers it supports or anything, but if it takes a three and a half millimeter jack, this will go out to it. The Echo Dot is available for 89 bucks. I went ahead and ordered mine earlier. The funny thing is you are supposed to actually have either a Fire TV, Fire TV stick, one or the other, or the Amazon Echo already to place your order right now. Alexa, order Echo Dot. Echo Dot, it's available for pre-order and will be delivered by March 31st. It's $95.39 total. To order it, tell me Jordan's voice code. Thanks. Order placed. But they've already figured out you don't have to have that. If you have the Android app or the iOS app, there's ways to get around it. So if you do want one of these, this is a great price point to get in on it. I got my original Amazon Echo for 99 bucks when they had it really, really discounted. So this is not that much cheaper for me but to have a second device here in the house, we're definitely all in for that. The tap, because I forgot to talk about it, is a Bluetooth speaker. It's essentially Amazon Echo, but with a battery built in, so you can take it on the go with you. And I would assume that it uses the Bluetooth to your phone to do all the things that need internet connectivity. It's not LTE or anything, but that one runs $129, and I honestly cannot see the justification for it. If I'm gonna be doing anything like that, I'm gonna just use my phone and any one of a thousand inexpensive Bluetooth speakers already out there. Moving right along, the Google I.O. lottery has been announced. You can put your name in the hat to see if you can get a ticket on March 8th. The event itself is going to be May 18th through the 20th, and it costs 900 bucks. And from what I've read, it actually looks like it's going to be more of a, instead of a conference, it's going to be more like a festival, I think. 900 bucks is still an awful lot to pay for an event like that, but I am still going to put my name in to see if I can get to go this year. And I'm going to put my name in as press again, too, just because. Now, the last thing that I mentioned in the intro, DisplayPort version 1.4, the standard, was released. It's going to take advantage of USB Type-C. It's going to support 8K at 60 frames per second, 4K at 120 frames per second, 
HDR video on both of those, and deep color, which I am not familiar with, on both of those. I am blown away and I cannot wait for that. I, I use DisplayPort right now, but I don't use it to its fullest because I don't have anything that has DisplayPort on the other end, but USB Type-C could take advantage of all of those things and be in a much smaller form factor and be everywhere when you buy new devices. So really looking forward to that. And the last sort of general tech news thing I wanted to talk about, Steam has now figured out that they should discount bundles if you already own the games in the bundle. So for example, if you own some of the Half-Life games, and you want to buy the Half-Life entire bundle of everything that's ever been Half-Life, you shouldn't have to pay for the one game that you already own or the 10 games you already own. So they figured out a way to work around that so it just crosses them off and gives you an appropriate level discount as a result. So that's a bit of a nice feature. Looking forward to the next Steam sale. Moving on, VR stuff. Pre-orders are now available for Microsoft HoloLens if you have an invite to it and 3,000 bucks to put down toward it. Nope. The HTC Vive is also available for pre-order. It's 800 bucks and it's gonna ship on April 5th. I had it in my cart for about a solid day and I still have not been able to decide whether or not I actually wanna pre-order it. I have a feeling I would do a video or two about it and then it would sit on a shelf. I've got the Oculus Rift down here. I say down here because it's sitting on top of my PC. I just don't really use it all that much. It looks amazing. I saw Barnacles did a video about it and it looks awesome. I just don't know when or if I would even use it. Intel has come out and announced they're making an AR headset, not a VR one, an AR one, to compete with Microsoft HoloLens, but they're not actually going to be selling it directly to consumers. They're getting it ready for hardware manufacturers, and it's going to use Intel's RealSense 3D sensing technology. So instead of having like a leap motion controller on the front of an Oculus Rift, you'd have Intel's RealSense 3D sensing stuff to sense where your hands are and where your environment is. Sounds cool, but again, they're putting it out to OEMs to see if the OEMs want to do stuff with it instead of actually making it and shipping it. Microsoft has announced they're bringing Minecraft to the Oculus Rift. That was actually already done in the past by a mod, if I remember correctly, and they've already got it running in the HoloLens. It's just a matter of making Minecraft run on the Oculus Rift. Can't wait to check it out. If it does actually happen, awesome. And in the last bit of VR news, on the weekends of March 5th and March 12th, there are gonna be 14 McDonald's locations in Sweden that are gonna be providing VR headsets with Happy Meals. So you pay $4.10, something like that, for a Happy Meal and you get a VR headset. Not sure how I feel about that. I like the idea. And let's wrap things up with a lot of science news because there was a ton of it this week. There's gonna be a total solar eclipse March 8th and March 9th, starting the evening of March 8th and going through, I guess, March 9th. It's gonna be partially viewable in Australia, East and Southeast Asia, and full on viewable in Indonesia. Unfortunately, here in the US, we're gonna completely miss it. We'll get the next one, I'm sure. A 520 million year old fossil was found in Southern China. It's a 10 centimeter long relative of insects, spiders, and crustaceans stations. And the really cool thing about this fossil is that it is so well preserved that they can actually see the nerves and the soft tissue of the original creature. You should go check out the pictures of it. It's just awesome. Scientists have developed some new solar cells. They're imitating the way that a moth's eyes work using a graphene-based material to intercept electromagnetic waves. And the cool thing about that is intercepting electromagnetic waves does not necessarily mean solar rays. It means anything that puts out EM. So lighting or cell phones or anything like that could potentially charge something with these cells on it. So if a watch was made with those cells on the face, you could technically charge it just by putting it near your phone. If a phone was made with those sorts of cells, you could charge it while it's sitting in a room without actually having it connected to anything, just pulling EM out of everything around it. That's amazing. And something we probably will not see for another five to 10 years at least, but still it's progress. And the last thing I wanted to go ahead and mention, scientists have found the genes that lead to gray hair and unibrows. If only they had found them sooner. No, the finding those genes doesn't really do anything. If you have them, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to end up with gray hair or a unibrow, but it's very clear that I had both of them. <laughs> but the article I read said that it's gonna be of great importance to the beauty industry, so cool. Doesn't affect me in the slightest. Maybe it will affect some of the products coming out. You know, maybe just for men will get a little bit better based upon the genes. As you can see, I do not use it, so whatever. And you know what? That's the last story I have on my little list here in front of me on my tablet, so. That's gonna be about all for me for today. If you like this video, remember to leave us a thumbs up below the video and subscribe to my channel to receive all of my videos of all of the random things I talk about when they become available. And we will see you again next time. That's very slow and kind of difficult to control. It's definitely drifting. Let me try.